Is Joe Kudian Man a modern human ancestor or an evolutionary dead end? Recently, a research team from the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology of the Chinese Academy of Sciences used new techniques including CT scanning and three-dimensional reconstruction to discover a human parietal bone from mammal fossils at the Zhou Kudian site location number 15 in Beijing. This is the first time a Chinese research team has discovered a Pleistocene human fossil at the Zhou Kudian site since 1973. The human parietal bone discovered this time is yellowish-brown in color, completely fossilized, and has bone thickness, curvature, and size that roughly overlap with the right parietal bone of the original Homo erectus cranium from Jokudian discovered in 1929. The new discovery of the human fossil at Jokudian has contributed to in-depth studies of human evolution in this region through comparative anatomy and molecular biology, providing extremely important and critical specimen materials for exploring the evolutionary patterns of ancient humans in China, according to researchers. The Zhou Kudian site, 26 miles or 42 kilometers, or kilos, as some would say, southwest of Beijing, is where Zhou Kudian man was discovered. Zhou Kudian man is a Homo erectus specimen identified through a complete skull cap discovered in 1929. The hominin lived approximately 500,000 years ago. Zhou Kudian man, also known as Homo erectus picanensis, is a subspecies of Homo erectus that lived at the Zhoukudian cave site in northern China, discovered by archaeologists led by Canadian archaeologist Davidson Black. The site holds the largest single collection of Homo erectus fossils, with 40 incomplete skeletons discovered. Dozens of other mammal fossils, including extinct giant deer, hyenas, and saber-toothed cats, have been discovered at the Zhoukudian site also known as Dragonbone Hill. Over the next decade of 1930s, the Jokudian site revealed more secrets. Additional skulls, teeth, and skeletal fragments emerged, as well as primitive tools made of stone and evidence of controlled fire. These findings painted a vivid picture of Jokudian man's life. They were hunters and gatherers subsisting on a diet of plants, small animals, and hunted meat. The charred bones in the caves suggested they understood fire, not merely as a destructive force, but as a tool for warmth and cooking. Indeed, Homo erectus, who was far removed from the mental level of the apes, knew how to wield fire without fear, the most significant discovery of the human race. You can imagine their families huddled around fires in the depths of the cave, their shadows dancing on the walls, hunters tracking prey through the dense forests, their crude weapons clenched in calloused hands. These were not mindless brutes, but beings striving to carve out an existence in a harsh, untamed world. Jokudian Man was a woodworking, fire-using, spear-wielding hominid who, for unknown reasons, enjoyed drilling holes into objects. And these hominids appear to have been very particular about their clothing, using stone tools to soften and depress animal hides. The new discoveries suggest that our ancestor was more sophisticated than previously thought. However, because of different interpretations of the evidence, proposed dates for when Zhou Kudian man inhabited this site vary greatly, but most place the site between 700,000 and 530,000 years ago. The oldest animal remains date back to 690,000 years ago, with tools dating back to 670,000 years ago, while another authority dates the tools to no earlier than 530,000 years ago. The fossils from Dragonbone Hill's cave sites show that the region was once populated by large animals such as elephants, rhinos, and extinct horses, which would have provided carrion for local scavengers, such as hyenas, bears, humans, and ravens. 
the Homo erectus fossils discovered at Zhou Kudian location, number one have been important research material for studying human evolution, attracting a lot of attention from both domestic and international scholars. According to evolutionary theory, the complexity of the human brain should increase over time, allowing for greater creativity and improved tools. However, Jokudian man is a Stone Age archaic human who left little evidence of evolution. According to a Chinese scientist, Chinese Homo erectus may not have been particularly intelligent, even compared to other species the Stone Age. Isolation may have reduced Chinese Homo erectus's adaptability. He had ape-like teeth and jaws, and he ate animals, nuts, seeds, and on occasion, humans. Homo erectus, previously known as Pithecampus erectus, is one of the oldest known human species. Furthermore, the discovery demonstrated that Jokudian man walked fully upright, like a human being, rather than stooping and shambling like an ape. Nonetheless, according to a recent report, the Jokudian man remains show little evidence of advanced evolution. According to Professor Wei Qi, a researcher at the Chinese Academy of Sciences Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology in Beijing, evidence suggests that Zhou Kudian man was, quote, stupid. Dr. Wei believes that in their isolated environment, Chinese Homo erectus may have interbred over many generations. This increases the likelihood that offspring will be born with so-called deleterious traits such as inherited conditions that impair intelligence and the ability to adapt and survive. For example, the scientist described how Zhou Kudian man worked a piece of stone by repeatedly striking it on one side but rarely turning over. Yet, in his humble way, Chinese Homo erectus could make tools such as stone knives and hatchets for his chores. The scientist, who examined over 140 finds dating back roughly 700,000 years, said structural changes in Jokudian man skulls, discovered in different layers of sediment at different times, indicated an unusually slow evolution over half a million years. Speaking of Homo erectus, culture or civilization may seem strange in light of what we know about his appearance and way of life. Nonetheless, he had a distinct culture level albeit a primitive one. He knew how to make stone implements for cutting wood and foraging in the earth, as well as for hunting and fighting with his own species. The fossil skeleton and other fossil evidence, such as stone tools, lead most scientists to conclude that, unlike their more primitive ancestors, Erectus evolved into efficient hunters. Researchers are still unsure what enabled these hominins to migrate so far past the obstacles that held back their ancestors, but it could be related to climate and ecological changes. Nevertheless, our close ancestors appear to have brought advanced knowledge of tool use with them. These tools were far more sophisticated than the simple items that their predecessors may have used. Many of the major sites with preserved Homo erectus have also preserved Aculean stone tools, which are hand axes that served our ancestors for over 1.5 million years. Normally, when Homo erectus is present, you see these beautiful pear-shaped hand axes, but many Asian sites lack these tools. These stone tools are classified based on how they were made, using flaking techniques, rather than what they were used for, which is still unknown. Nevertheless, it is fairly clear that the tools were sourced from materials that were not immediately available, requiring more sophisticated planning. But many sites where Asian Homo erectus was discovered are surprisingly devoid of these Aculean axes. Instead, these hominins used tools made of modified muscle shells that functioned as knives, and also likely used knives and other tools made of bamboo. Meanwhile, recent studies have shown that Homo erectus built shelters, caught fish, cooked in earthen ovens, and most likely crossed open water in some sort of watercraft, in addition to hunting giant elephants and other dangerous creatures. The cave contains the story of both Jokudian man 
and Jokudian woman. She lived 500,000 years ago, and she was not beautiful by our standards. The facial reconstruction required giving her a much thicker neck than any modern woman. Both the back of the skull and the powerful, chinless jaw revealed muscle attachments that made such a neck unmistakable. Similarly, the cheeks had to be shaped to fit the muscle mass required to operate that heavy jaw. Brow ridges were extremely prominent on the species, including their women. The most notable feature is the skull's low, flat arch. The arch of his skull top from front to back provides compelling evidence. It is the flattest and most gorilla-like of any known human skull, even flatter than one of the two skulls from Java, though the forehead is slightly higher. A sharp notch between the forehead and the thick ridge of the beetling brows is also gorilla-like. This feature is much more prominent in Homo erectus skulls. The position of the opening through which the spinal cord passes is an intermediate feature between apes and modern humans. In apes, this is located at the back of the skull and points outward. In modern humans, it is located well below the base of the skull and points upward. This opening can be seen from the back of Jokudian man, just below the base of the skull. The brain inside that unusually shaped skull was quite small, but still within the human size range. Its average volume was 1,000 cubic centimetres, a little more than a quart. The largest Homo erectus skull ever collected has a capacity of 1,220 cubic centimetres, far inferior to the modern European average of 1,350 cubic centimetres. Several of the nine skulls collected thus far have been intact enough to allow brain casts to be made within their skull cases, allowing us to determine the size, shape and total volume of the brain. It is a small and flat brain with several structures that closely resemble those found in the brains of apes. Jaws and teeth, as well as skull and brain, provide evidence for their primitiveness. Apes have jaws with teeth arranged in a narrow horseshoe arch, and this ancient Chinese human has jaws that are less human and more ape-like. The canine teeth, while not as fang-like as those seen in gorillas, were noticeably larger and much longer rooted than the corresponding teeth in our own jaw. Nevertheless, there is evidence of rudimentary speech. The vertebral canal of Erectus does not appear to have developed sufficiently to provide him with the breathing control required for complex speech, but he may have been the first hominid to use a proto-language, based on evidence from the cervical vertebrae. Although there is no archaeological evidence, its well-developed brain and physical capabilities indicate that it may have used symbolic thought. A quantum leap in cognition and technology occurred approximately 800,000 years ago, and all of the characteristics that define modern humans were first developed in Homo erectus. Jokudian man travelled long distances on foot, working hard to find enough meat to feed his growing body and brain. He had full human stature as well. Estimates based on the length of the thigh bone indicate that their average height was approximately 5 feet 4 inches. Another thing these new leg bone discoveries suggest is confirmation of an existing theory, based on the broken condition of all the skulls discovered so far. The leg bones were cracked open and blackened from exposure to fire. Indeed, Erectus is also accused of having been a cannibal. Skull hunting and cannibalism, with their magical implications, date back over a million years. One of the earliest known cases of cannibalism among hominids occurred around 800,000 years ago. Some anthropologists believe some victims were eaten as part of a territorial defence strategy against neighbours. Both ritual cannibalism and headhunting practices are rooted in magic and religion, and they are signs of man's spiritual awakening, though their exact meaning is unclear. Bones from their ancient feasts are buried in the debris that has accumulated inside their caves, 
After all, they had to eat something other than themselves and their neighbours. Most importantly, he was familiar with the use of fire, and anthropology considers this discovery to be the greatest single step forward in the history of humanity. So take him as you find him, beneath the thick neck, cannibalism and all. Despite his flaws, after all, Zhou Kudian man was still human. With that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning, and please subscribe, share, and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you.